Hey guys, welcome to Fall Food Friday. Today is our fourth and final Fall Food Friday. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it's an open collab that's been hosted by Fallon over at Moss Family TV for the last four weeks. I'm sure all of you watching know who Fallon is, but if you don't, go check out her channel. I'll have it linked below. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you a chili recipe that is brand new to me. I've been making the same recipe for well over 20 years. I never change it, and I just wanted to mix things up a little bit. So this is my first time making it, and at the end, I am gonna tell you what I honestly thought of it. If I would make it again, or if it was better than my chili. So you'll have to stick around to see that. And then I'm also gonna be sharing with you a pumpkin peanut butter oat bar. It's sort of like a healthy snack, but it's really good. It has peanut butter, oats, honey, and it's a no-bake dessert or healthy snack. It's more of like a healthy snack. So those are the two things I'm sharing this week, so come check out what I made. I have everything out that I need for my peanut butter pumpkin oat bars. We're going to be using a cup of natural peanut butter. That's what this recipe calls for. I guess you could use um, Jif or Skippy. I think it was just meant to be more of a healthy recipe. So a no sugar added natural peanut butter. This one has no salt or sugar, so I will be adding a little salt. If you're going to use a no salt peanut butter, you want to add a little salt. The only other ingredient in here is palm oil. I have a jar of natural peanut butter that's peanut butter only, but it's not open, so I'm using this one. I have my pumpkin pie spice, and I have two cups of oats back there. We will be adding a total of three, and then there's three quarters cup of honey. And I'm using a seven by 11 pan that I've just sprayed, and I've laid the parchment paper down so it'll stick. You can also do this in an eight by eight or a nine by nine. I just like mine a little bit thinner, that's why I use that size pan. I'm just starting by getting the peanut butter into my bowl. Then I'm going to add my three quarters cup of honey. I couldn't find my three quarter cup, so we just have a half and a quarter there. Once that's in the bowl, stir it up, and then it's gonna go in the microwave for a total of 30 seconds. Every 10 seconds, though, you wanna stop it and stir it. So it really does come together easily because you're using the natural peanut butter, which is not as sticky as like a Skippy peanut butter or a Jif. So I'm gonna get this into the microwave, but first I'm gonna add a little bit of salt because there was no salt in that peanut butter. Once it's out of the microwave, it's time to add your pumpkin pie spice, and that step is optional. Sometimes they make it without, but it's the fall season, it's pumpkin season, so I decided to do it this way this time. I added almost a teaspoon total. Really, that's just to taste. I started with my two cups and stirred it up, and then I did add one additional cup. Just keep stirring, it will come together. It takes a little bit of work, and it looks at first like it's not gonna come together, but it does. Then you're just gonna wanna put it into your pan, whether you're using the seven by 11 or eight by eight or nine by nine, and you're just gonna press it down the best that you can. Just you know, spread it and press it, try to get it to all the edges. This is what you have, and that's gonna go in the fridge. I can't remember what the original recipe said. I think it said like four hours or overnight. I've always done it overnight. So I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna cover it, pop it in the fridge, and then I will see you tomorrow morning when I cut these up. Now it's the next morning. I just got these out of the fridge and I took the cover off of them. I'm gonna start cutting them up. I like to cut them in little squares. You can always cut them bigger if you want it more like a granola bar, but I just usually cut them in the little squares. I put them on this plate. I'll cover them and keep them in the fridge like that for a few days, and then whatever I don't eat. I'll end up putting them in the freezer and taking them out. So just a good little snack, and now it's time to make some chili. Okay, guys, I know you just saw my intro. I'm taking you back to the night before I made this chili because there's something we have to do the night before. So here's what I'm using. It's called the, I can say this on YouTube, right? Because it's a donkey that's an ass. So it's ass kicking chili fixins. I got this at Bass Pro Shop. And I love, I know I mentioned it in one of my other videos. I think I had, it was my fry seasoning from Cabela's. I love when I go to Cabela's or Bass Pro 
to look around their like little specialty food section. They have so much fun stuff. So I said, I'm going to try another, a different chili because I've been making the same chili forever and ever and ever. And I'm trying something new. So this is what we're trying guys. So we're doing this together. So flipping it around, here is what you're going to need. I hope I'm focusing this for you guys. Uh, two pounds of meat. I'm using ground beef, ground beef, olive oil, an onion, garlic, stewed tomatoes, tomato paste, chicken or beef broth or water, salt, and a bag of this. So it does tell you you have to soak the beans overnight. Then we have to simmer it low boil for two to three hours until almost soft. So this is what I'm doing now. I'm gonna get this into my bowl of water. I'm gonna fill that bowl up with water back there. I'm gonna soak it overnight. I know I said that last week when I made my lentils. I never soak beans or anything. I know a lot of people do, but I'm trying to follow a recipe to a T. So this is where I'm starting. I'm gonna keep that bag, this bag of course, because I have to go through the directions tomorrow. But I figured, let me open up this bag now and let's see what's in here together. And I'll see, you know, what I have to throw in there, which I think is just the beans. So let's do that now. So I guess I, do I have to cut this bag? Oh, I hate cutting this bag. It's so cute. Okay, let's cut it. All right, let's see what's in here. It's like Christmas, you guys. Oh, look, it's all in there. Oh, okay. So here's all the beans. It says it has, I believe, black beans and pinto beans. Yep. Here's your ingredients. Yeah, black beans and pinto beans. And then all the chili powder, onion, garlic, oregano, cumin, all that other stuff. Okay. So let's do this. First, I'm gonna dump these beans into this bowl. Okay. And, oops, got a couple extras. Nope. Okay. So this is the masa, and that's to thicken it, it says, which makes sense. Let's get all these beans. So I guess what I'm doing is I'm soaking them overnight, and then of course I am gonna rinse them you know, in a colander, because why not? Um, trying to read what this says on here. Oh, this is the habanero pepper pack. So here's what it says. I'm really hoping I'm focusing this for you guys. Half packet, does it say half? Third packet, a third of a packet, it'll be like warm. I guess meaning like heat, habanero heat scale. And then two thirds will be hot and it'll be kick your ass if you use the whole thing. Well, you guys know me, I'm putting it all in. I love my heat, so I'm excited to try that. And then this is the chili seasoning spice. So that's it besides the other ingredients that you need to have that I already named off to you. And what's this cute little thing? Oh, it just tells you, like, if you want your chili a little thicker, now is the time to add the masa. Okay, so I'm going to keep this. Oh, so besides the bag, it gives you, like, a little recipe card. It's the same thing that's on the bag. Okay, that's cool. So you don't have to keep the bag. If you throw the bag away, you can keep this. Whatever. Okay. So that's it, guys. I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to fill that bowl up with water. I'm going to get these in the fridge, and then I will be back tomorrow morning, and we are going to cook this together. See you tomorrow. Okay, so now it is the next morning, and here are how these beans are looking. They've soaked overnight. They're still hard. So I'm going to get them drained, and I am going to get them in my pot here full with water. And it says we are going to simmer these for two to three hours. Um, low and then we'll get on to making the chili so see you in two or three hours here's how the beans look after two hours it did take exactly two hours I 
brought them up to a boil. I let them boil for maybe five minutes. Then I took it down to a really low simmer and stirred them every few minutes. It said until they were just soft and they are soft. So we're just gonna put these to the side and get on to making the chili. Starting on the chili, I have the recipe here because for once in my life, I'm really trying to follow a recipe to a T. With the exception being the meat, it's supposed to be two pounds. It is two pounds, four ounces. That's what I had left after I packaged up the hamburger meat I bought in bulk. I have my four cloves of garlic, my one large onion, two cans of tomato paste that calls for 12 ounces. Those are six ounce cans. And I'm gonna be using one cup of beef broth. It does say you could use chicken broth or water. And then I have my four 14.5 ounce cans of stewed tomatoes. And the recipe calls for four 14 to 16 ounce cans. So we're on track for doing this recipe by the book. I'm doing it, you guys. Now I'm just going to get started. I'm going to get my garlic minced up. I'm going to chop up my onion. And the recipe does say to brown or, you know, heat up the garlic and the onion together and then remove it from the pan, which is something I'm not used to doing. I normally will brown my meat first and then I'll put my garlic in, or I don't even use garlic in my chili recipe, but the onion I do add to the meat when it's almost browned. So I'm following this and this is what we're doing. So we're gonna get this onion chopped up. We're gonna get it into the pot with our oil. I have my onion all diced up and my garlic is all minced. I'm gonna start adding the oil to the pot right now and following the recipe, I'm actually measuring out three tablespoons of the olive oil. When I get the onions and the garlic in there, I did add a teaspoon of salt. The recipe does call for two teaspoons. I think when I reread it, you were supposed to add it when you added all the other mixtures, but I always like to salt my onions. So I added the salt. I got these to the point where they were just nice and soft, but they were not starting to brown. Like I told you before, I always add my onions to the meat, so I was worried about them turning brown. I didn't want that to happen. Now I'm adding in my meat. And I added the other teaspoon, I don't know if I said tablespoon before, but it's one teaspoon and one teaspoon. So I added a teaspoon to the meat and then I just let it brown. And the next step is to add in the onions and garlic. Our meat's all brown. Now I'm putting back in my onions and my garlic. Then it's going to be time to add our four cans of stewed tomatoes. I don't think I've ever even cooked with stewed tomatoes before. I usually use diced tomatoes in my chili. I added all four cans. That really looked like a lot to me. Now I had to add the tomato paste, which is something I don't add in my chili either. And this looked like a lot to me. So I got everything in there. I added one cup of beef broth. That to me did not look like enough, but I stirred it around. I was trying to follow it. At this point, I'm adding the chili seasoning packet, and then it's time to add the habanero packet. And I added the whole thing. I showed you guys that heat scale before we started, and I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you my review at the end, but that heat scale was not a lie. I love spicy, but this was over the top. I then added my beans, mixed those up, and now it was time to let it start simmering. It said that you can simmer it for 30 minutes and then if you wanted to add the masa and simmer it a little bit more. To me it just looked so thick I was afraid I was going to have to add more beef broth. But after 40 minutes here's how it looked. Now I did check it after 20 and I stirred it and then I put it back on for another 20. So this is how it looked after 40 minutes. The tomatoes really did start to break down and create a lot more liquid so I did not have to add the additional beef broth, which is what I thought initially I would have to do with all those tomatoes and all that tomato paste. So then I put a lid on it for 45 more minutes and I stirred it about every 15 minutes. So we'll come back at that point. This is where we were after another 45 minutes. The thickness was pretty good. I did end up adding that masa though because I tasted this and it was hot. I mean, the heat level was off the chart. So I did what they said with the masa. They said to mix it with water pour it into the chili and then simmer it some more, which I did. So initially I cooked it for 40 minutes, then I did the extra 45, 
And now here after adding the masa, I did it for 20. So this cooked for a total of one hour and 45 minutes. When it was done, I let it cool down for almost an hour and a half. And then I did put it in my fridge for a couple hours. I usually like to make my chili the night before. I just think it tastes better the next day. I think most people do. But I had it in my fridge and then I took it out. So I'm going to bring you back when it's dinner time. Now for the moment of truth. I'll start by saying I ate this the way I normally eat my chili. I have a little bit of diced onion. I have some shredded cheddar cheese and I'm using Fritos. I like either Fritos or Tostitos in my chili. I don't do crackers. So I did it the exact same way I would do mine. Now on this night, three of us ate this. So I'm going to give you all of our opinions. Lee and I had the same opinion. We both liked it. We both said it was way too hot. But we did like the flavor. So we agreed that we would try this again. We would just cut that heat packet down to half or one third. The other person who ate this with us was my dad. He is also a person who loves spicy food. He said it was way too hot and he did not like the flavor at all. So he would not want to try this again. So that was my little experiment. I would try it again. I'm just definitely cutting down that heat. So anyway... Thanks for coming along on this experiment with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed already, please do. I'd love to have you around. And a big thank you to Fallon over at Moss Family TV for hosting this collab. I've had so much fun. I've, had, I've met so many cool people through this. And I hope to do something like this with you great ladies again soon. And that's going to do it for this video. So I will see you on the next one. Bye.